So next up in our MySQL series is the JSON data type. So if you've worked with Mongo or if you've worked with any other document database system, uh, you're familiar with JSON and working with JSON documents. That's what the term document usually refers to as a JSON object. So we can actually now, as of version 5.7.8 of MySQL, we can actually save JSON natively inside of the database. And there's a whole collection of methods. So there's the data type, and then there's the JSON functions. I'm going to leave links to both of these pages in the description down below. Um, I'm going to be working with a table that I've already got set up. So the people table, I'm going to be creating a new column in here and showing you how to work with JSON and use some of those functions. Uh, if you haven't been following along, or if you just want to make sure that you've got the most up-to-date version of this table inside your database, I have a SQL file here saved as a code gist. The link is down below in the description as well. So you can copy and paste from here into the SQL tab, or you can download this, expand it, get the SQL file from that, and then you can go to your database and click on the Import tab to import that SQL file and make sure that you've got the people table. Okay. So once we have this people table, we're just going to be working with a few of these columns, person ID, first name, last name, and we're going to create a brand new one called person data. And inside of that column, we're going to be saving some JSON data. Now, if you're not really familiar with JSON, um, I'll also provide a link here. JSON.org is the website for JSON. If you want to learn exactly uh, how JSON works and what's involved, in a nutshell, um, JSON is arrays, objects, strings, numbers, booleans, and the value null. It is supposed to be this transportable data format. So you can write everything out as a string and then transport it from one language to another, from one server to another, from one computer to another. And all the different programming languages have adopted JSON as this wonderful interchangeable format or exchangeable format. So as long as you're following the rules of creating JSON, it doesn't matter if you've got it in a database or using it with JavaScript or Java or Kotlin or C Sharp or something else, you should be able to work with the raw JSON data. And each language will have its own collection of methods that you can use. Um, one of the most important being being able to take it from an object and turn it into a string or from a string and turning it into an object or an array. Okay, so that's JSON in a nutshell. We want to create a column where we can save data that is JSON and keep it as JSON data instead of just having this string. So let's do an alter table command. We're going to be altering our people table and we want to add a column. We're going to call ours person data. There we go, person data. And the data type is JSON. That's it. That's all we need to do. So we will run that. Boom, there we go. Now, in our table, we have this column, which is allowed to be null. Uh, the only valid default value you can have for a JSON column is null. So you can't say that it's going to have some other default object that's going to be put inside there. Null is the only thing that you are allowed to put in there as a default. So we have our type is JSON. We have our column. Great. Now let's look at actually putting some data into there. Now, just to save us a moment, I copied and pasted in the basic command. So we're inserting into people the three columns, first name, last name, person data. Person ID is an auto increment column, so that's automatically going to get the number. Uh, account type has a default value, date of birth has a default, and these three are allowed to be null. So inside this third one, person data, this is where we put our JSON objects. Now we want to put single quotes around it, and then we're because we're using double quotes inside the JSON data itself. So we're going to create an object inside each one. It's going to have a value. Let's call it identity. And he's going to be Superman. And the same property identity here is going to be Batman. And for the final one, we've got the Hulk. 
So you can see that I'm using double quotes around each of the keys and each of the values. And I'm using single quotes around the whole object. If this were an array, it'd be the same thing. Or if it were a string, it'd be the same thing. Our JSON is allowed to be object, array, string, number, date, boolean, or null. If we are putting values of null, true, or false, so null, true, or false, if we're putting those into our JSON, we have to make sure that those are lowercase. Uh, it is case sensitive for the JSON when we're putting it inside of there. MySQL, if I were writing a command like a select command or something, I can write this like this, like this, like this. It doesn't care. Uh, it will work either way. It's case insensitive. But for JSON, it is case sensitive. It must be all lowercase for those. Okay, so we have our insert statement. We're going to run this. It's going to insert those three things. They're all going to have the same property, identity. So we'll click go. There we go. So it says it inserted three rows. Now we'll come over here. We'll browse, take a look at this. And there we go. You can see inside the person data, there's our JSON objects. Now it, it really looks like a string if you're reading it inside of here, but those are actual JSON objects. That's the string representation of them that we're seeing there. So back to our SQL tab. Let's take a look at some of the other things that we can do with this. Okay, again, quickly, I just copied and pasted in here so I could let you see it while I talk. So person data, that's going to be the raw JSON data. It'll be written out here as a string. Now there's this cool little character here. There is a method called JSON extract. This is going to allow us to extract something from the JSON. So we say, all right, what's the object that you are going to be pulling from? If you're doing a select statement from a column, you can do that. You can say, this is the column that I'm extracting it from. And the second part is the path. So the path is inside your object. What's the name of the property? Well, all of these paths, we would write them written inside of single quotes like this, dollar sign dot so this dollar sign represents the document. What's the name of the property? Well, I want to get the property called identity, like that. So this line right here, this is the equivalent of what we've done right here. The single arrow, so a hyphen, and then the single arrow, single greater than sign, then inside of quotation marks, single or double here in our SQL, it doesn't matter. Inside the method, we want to use single quotes, but up here, it doesn't matter. Dollar sign, that's our document, which is the person data object. We want to get the property called identity. So that's going to bring back for us the value of identity. Here I'm doing it with two angle brackets. So let's run this and see what the difference is. All right. So I'll expand that so we can see it. Person data, there we have it as the string representation of the whole object. Here's the one with the single angle bracket right here, this column. And you can see that it remains with the quotation marks around the value. Those quotation marks get left if you do it this way. That's the result of the um, JSON extract method. If you do the JSON extract, this is the value that you get. There's another method called JSON unquote. And if you wrap that around the extract, you get the equivalent of this with the two angle bracket, which I think is much easier to write than doing JSON unquote, open parentheses, JSON extract, name of the column, comma, whatever the path is, close parentheses, close parentheses, and then your um, alias for the column. It's just much easier to do it this way. This is a quick shorthand, uh, which works really, really well. Okay, so this is how you can extract this. Now, it doesn't have to be just inside the select clause. You can also do this inside the where clause. So we can say where, um, well, let's do the person data with two dollar sign dot identity equals, and what's the value? Well, 
it's one of these. So let's do Superman. There we are. So this is going to retrieve and filter the results. So I only get one row back. And because I use the double here, it means that I can just put the string like this. If I'd use the single, it means I'm getting the unquoted value back. And then I have to do this. I have to write the single quotes around the double quotes, which again, pain in the ass to do. So don't bother with that. Just use the one with the double angle brackets. Unless you've got some special use case, just do it this way. And there it is. There's the one row that matched. So we have this one value where this matched the value inside of person data's identity uh, key. Okay, there's a handful of other methods that we can use as well. Um, well, there's actually quite a few, but I'm not going to go through all of the methods here. Just a few of the, uh, the quick and easy ones. You can, if you ever get a series of values and you want to take them from those values and turn them into actual JSON values. This is how you do it. JSON array, we can provide a series of values. So if I've got a, in my PHP code, for example, let's say I've got a series of variables that I want to feed into here without having to turn the variables into the JSON within my PHP code, I can just pass them in like this as arguments. And then in my query, I'm going to say JSON array and then give them the values. So one true, some string and some date, 2009, 09-12, oh, extra zero there. So that will give me an actual JSON array, JSON object. Same sort of idea, except with objects, you've got keys and values. So let's say I've got the key A, which is set to one. I've got the key B, which is set to Steve. I've got the key C, which is set to true and D, which is null. There we are. Then if you want to find out what the, um, Oh, my, my error that I've got right here, uh, looking at this, I, I've written it out as I would with JSON, just purely out of habit. So for the JSON object, what you do is here's the key, here's the value, 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 like that. So it's just a comma separated list of key value, key value, key value, key value, as many as you have like that. And JSON type, we're going to feed in a column name, the person data, and it's going to look at that and it's going to tell me what JSON type that is. And we should get something that says uh, object for this. So we'll run that. Okay, so JSON array, you can see it had turned those values that I provided into an array of the values. So there's the number, there's the Boolean, there's a string, there's a date. All of them are inside of the square brackets for the array. For the object, we got key, value, key, value, key, value, key, value. Note the lowercase for the true and the null. And then JSON type, this one was null, that was the default value. And then we've got object, person data, all of these were objects. They weren't arrays. They weren't scalar values like strings or numbers or dates. They were objects. All right. Now, sometimes, let's say we're going to select just person data. We'll simplify this. Okay. All I'm doing is I'm selecting that one column from the table people. But if I run this, as is. This is what I get. And you can imagine that if you have a large object with a lot of data inside of it, you're going to get a, qu a fairly complex thing. And it's going to be all crushed together, hard to read, not a lot of spacing. So if you want to make it a little bit nicer, there is a JSON pretty method. This is a very useful one to have. Now this is going to format this. 
we'll just call it formed. There we are. Now, I've only got one property and one value, but you can see it's adding the carriage returns and it would also add indenting. As the structure became more and more complex, it pretties the JSON for us for display purposes. Quite useful. Okay, and in those uh, functions, there's quite a few others here. Uh, you do have to be careful because this was the first version. There was a few methods that were put in that have since been deprecated. Uh, JSON append now is replaced with two different versions. Uh, there's the JSON array append. If you're working with arrays, there's an append, there's an insert. Um, JSON merge, another one which was dropped very quickly, uh, has been replaced by these two, JSON merge patch and preserve. So I'll show you a quick example with those in just a moment. Um, remove, replace, you want to search, you want to find out if it contains something or if there's a, a property or if there's a value somewhere in your JSON. These are great methods to use. Uh, I really do encourage you to spend a little bit of time and experiment with some of these methods. I'm just going to do this one final example for you with merge, patch, and preserve to explain the difference. Uh, this is when you're taking some JSON and you're putting new JSON into that column how would you modify it? So let's say I've already got a property called name in there and I'm putting a new name property. Do I want to keep both values or do I want to replace the old one with the new one? And that's kind of the difference between patch and preserve. So let's take a look at those ones for an example. All right, these are the examples I'm going to use. So let's say this first value right here, you could put the column name here. So let's just pretend that this is what's in the column right now. And I'm going to be putting in this value. And if I call patch or preserve, it's going to be a different behavior. So if this is what's in the original column value right now, and this is what I'm passing into there, and I'm using this method to determine what I'm going to do, patch will replace. So it takes the new value and replaces the old one. It patches the old one with the new value. Preserve means keep the old one and bring the new one in. So I'm going to run this and we can see exactly how they work. So with patch, both of them the same, it's replacing Steve with Steve. So there's the result. With preserve, it didn't replace Steve with Steve, it added Steve to Steve, and now this is an array. So the, the key name points to an array instead of just a single string. And then if the new thing comes in, it's the same. You can see Dave replaced Steve inside of here. This is the result. And with preserve, we've got Steve and Dave. Both values are now inside there. All right, so that's a very quick intro. I know I've been talking for quite a while, but uh, that really is just sort of the surface of what you can do with JSON when working with MySQL. I do strongly encourage you to go and take a look and experiment with some of these functions that you've got in JSON. Uh, some amazing stuff you can do with JSON, uh, which really helps to offload some of the work that you would be doing in your server-side programming. Uh, just think about putting these into a functions or uh, stored procedures you can really uh, save yourself some time. Uh, even with triggers, you can add uh, JSON functions into those triggers. All right, um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, check out all the links that I've got down below. And as always, thanks for watching.